Today I wanted to go over our network and virtual switch function. Uh, this can be found by hitting the main menu at the top and going to network and virtual switch, or you can also find it in the control panel under network and file services. Um, so anybody that's had a QNAP for maybe over five years uh, would probably remember that there used to just be a network setting uh, directly here in the control panel. And it would open up a window similar to, um, say, general settings. It would just be within the control panel uh, so that you would see uh, the basic functions directly here. Um, because the network and virtual switch has evolved so much and there's so many extra settings, um, now when you choose the network and virtual switch option, it actually opens up its own application now. Um, so we've tried to keep all the network settings um, completely isolated from everything else just because you can do so much in here. Uh, we do have two ways to display this. We have the basic version, which is what you're seeing here, and we have an advanced toggle as well. So you can switch to advanced and see a few more options in the menu and see some different functions. Um, this particular NAS is a uh, TVS-H1288X running QUTS Hero, but the network and virtual switch is uh, basically exactly the same uh, between our normal QTS operating system as well as QUTS Hero. It's, a, it's, it's the same uh, options that you'll see. Um, so this particular NAS, I've got the four uh, onboard network adapters. I do have the 10 gig adapter removed at the moment for some other PCI adapters. So normally you'd see another two adapters. Uh, but we can see I've got one port connected, which is adapter one, and I've got the other three not connected. Uh, so basic functions, I'll show you that on ones that are not connected because we can see that I've got adapter one already in a virtual switch to show you how that works. Uh, but if you have a, a regular adapter not added into a virtual switch, they will simply just look like this uh, adapter 2, 3 or 4. Um, and you can do basic functions here, such as clicking the three dots on the side. And you can see things like configure the adapter, if you want to set some specific settings for the IP address and DNS and gateway. Uh, you can add a VLAN. Or you can just get some basic information about the adapter. Information is just that. You can't change anything in here. But you can see if you've got an IP address, what it was issued by, what it is, IPv6, as well as the hardware uh, you know, if you've got things like uh, port trunking enabled, which we covered in another video, um, and if you're using any of the advanced features of the adapter as well. Um, so port trunking, I did cover in another, in another video that we put up not too long ago, so I won't cover that again. But the option for that is up there, even in the, uh, the basic, basic mode down here, you can still see the port trunking options. Um, so if you wanted to change some settings on an adapter, you just click the three dots. Click Configure, and you can set static IP addresses, change the jumbo frames all the way up to 9000 if you want to. Um, again, we did another video on jumbo frames recently as well, so go check that out if you want to know more about those. Uh, you can do the IPv6 settings, and you can set DNS information as well. Now, when you do uh, have multiple adapters, um, if you have uh, multiple adapters with a default gateway and DNS settings set on them, um, we can only use one at a time, so you have to choose that. So there's a button up here that will pop out a window that says uh, which adapter is being used for the system default gateway. There's an option to auto select or you can manually pick the adapter if we've auto selected the uh, a one that you didn't want to use if you wanted to use a different one. So you've got different options there. This would be important if you've got um, uh, two NAS on the same network, perhaps we have um, uh, some people that maybe like to do off-site backups through a separate internet connection that's on a different default gateway. Um, so you could have uh, the automatic setting is what we might pick, which is your normal router that you've got. But if you wanted to use it through a different gateway for some dedicated bandwidth for, say, uploading your data or back backing up your data to the cloud, you can pick a different adapter on a, on a different NAS if you if you wanted to as well. At the top, we've got options for Wi-Fi as well. So if you wanted to use one of our PCIe adapters, PCI Express adapters that plugs into the back of the NAS, you can use those. Um, or you can use some uh, third-party USB ones that can plug into the uh, USB ports. Um, so we would generally uh, recommend that the USB ones go in the front port uh, so that the signals don't have to transmit through the metal chassis to get to your router. Normally, the front of, of the NAS would be facing into where your, your, your antenna would be for your um, access point to your router that you've got. Um, I don't have any of these connected, so right now it's just showing there are no available, but this is just giving you information that you can use it. Um, if I was to do the same configure function, so if I did the configure on adapter 2, I get a lot of information. If I do it on adapter 1, which is in a virtual switch, I'll get a lot less information when I do that. I only get the jumbo frame settings because this adapter is part of a virtual switch. 
So when you put an adapter in a virtual switch, all functions are controlled uh, from the virtual switch. So things like the IP addressing, things like that, you'd have to go configure the virtual switch to change the adapters. Uh, so we can see here that the IP address is virtual switch 4, and it gives you the IP address there. Uh, we do have some other functions as well, DHCP servers. So if you wanted to, you can add DHCP servers to specific adapters as well. So if you wanted the uh, the QNAP to be responsible for giving out the IP address to uh, users of a network, you can set that up as well. And we've also got a uh, dynamic DNS, DD, uh, DDNS options as well. Uh, we've got a QNAP, uh, my QNAP Cloud one added. I've not configured it at the moment, but that's where you would um, configure it if you wanted to, or you can just do it straight away um, in the my QNAP Cloud application that's pre-installed on your NAS as well. So you can also configure that, that, that one from there. Um, if you wanted to add a, a different one that's a non-QNAP one, you can just click the Add option. And we've got a lot of different options here. So if the uh, provider of the dynamic DNS that you want to use is not listed, you can choose the customized option. Uh, you just need to get the, uh, the settings for this screen from whichever pro uh, provider you want to use. And you can update the IP address as much as every five minutes. So um, if your uh, internet IP address ever did uh, change because you're on a dynamic IP address, now you would only ever be uh, losing connection to your NAS from a remote location for a maximum of five minutes if you set it to that option there. Um, so once you do that, you can uh, add it in and you can add um, a few of those here if you wanted to as well. So I'm going to leave without uh, saving any settings because I, I'm not adding a dynamic DNS here. If I go to the overview, we can get a, a sort of peek at what the virtual switch looks like. So here we've got virtual switch 4, and we can see we've got a Windows uh, 10 virtual machine assigned to that virtual switch. Um, also, what you can see here is a physical uh, sort of uh, 3D layout of the back of the, sorry, not 3D, 2D layout of the back of the NAS. And it's put a green light next to which physical adapter we're using. So if I was to go look at the back of the NAS, I can see that I do have one single port connected and it is the one that's lit up so if i had one in port one one in port three they would both be green uh, so it just gives you an idea of which one's connected now right now because i'm in basic mode i can't configure the virtual switch i can't change any settings on it um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click the advanced button and we're going to see that the menus on the left we're going to get a couple of extra options so now i can see that we've got the root option and we've got virtual switch um, so with the virtual switch, I can now click into the virtual switch area and I can see that we've got a few already created. So all of these are automatically created uh, in a couple of ways. So this particular NAS does have both container station and virtualization station already installed. And when you first uh, run those applications, they will create virtual switches for themselves automatically. Um, so here we've got the uh, ones for the various functions of container stations. So we've got different ones for different functions and they're on different ranges. And we've also got one uh, for the Windows 10 virtual machine that I'm using as well. So that's put the main adapter uh, into a uh, virtual switch for so one, two, three, four. If you ever wanted to change these, you can. So you can click edit and you can type and change these names to something that's a bit more easier for you to remember. Um, but you can do that. Um, so as I said before, when I was configuring the main interface here of adapter one uh, and went to configure, all we could change was the jumbo frame settings. So if I wanted to change the IP address settings of my main um, uh, network adapter, I can now come to the virtual switch and click configure instead. So here it's just confirming which adapter you want to configure. Maybe you want to add another physical adapter into the same virtual switch. You can do that. Um, here it's letting me know that the Windows 10 virtual machine is assigned to this as well. Um, so I could change this virtual machine to a different adapter if I physically wanted to as well. Um, so I'm going to leave it set to there and click next. So we can see that I've got it set to be a DHCP client. So I'm getting the IP address from my router. I, the DHCP server on my network is run by my router. Uh, so that's what I've set. But if I ever wanted to change it, I can change it to static IP address. And you can just type in the, the IP if you want and the subnet mask, you can just pick from one of the choices. Uh, you can also not assign an IP address if you want to. Uh, so in one of our previous videos, we did about PFSense running it on your NAS. Um, in this case, the, the LAN adapter that I assigned through to PFSense, I said don't assign an IP address to the virtual switch because the virtual machine of PFSense um, the routing software, it was going to manage getting the IP addresses itself, so I didn't set it one. Uh, but you can choose a lot of different options here. I'll just leave this on DHCP client. 
Uh, now you get some options to enable things like NAT, which is network address translation. This will allow you to uh, effectively configure a simple router um, uh, on your QNAP. So you could assign a couple of LAN ports to a virtual switch, and you could assign uh, NAT information so that one of the adapters um, is, say, pointing to the internet or one set of network uh, address range. And you could have another adapter on a different one, and you can route traffic from one to the other. So you've got different options. And when you use NAT, you may want to use the DHCP server. So there's an option to enable that there as well. We'll click Next. So here you can do IPv6. If you want IPv6, you've got options for that there. And you've also got the DNS information. On the final screen, it just confirms all the settings you want to do. I'm going to cancel it. I haven't changed anything, so I'm not going to, uh, to go through it. There's a lot of different options that you can do within the virtual switch. So the first one we've created here is the software defined switch mode. So this means if you've got um, multiple uh, physical interfaces, you can simulate them with software to be uh, one layer two switch. So for example, if I was to choose this, I can say I want ports three and four, let's say, uh, to be part of a uh, software defined switch. So anybody that's plugging into port three will be able to talk to somebody that's plugged into port four. So it's going to create a, a, a switch. So on some QNAPs, we sell them with um, up to eight LAN ports built in. You can add more if you want to. We've got uh, PCIe adapters that can give you up to four 2.5 gig ports um, off one single PCIe slot. Um, so you could effectively create a lot of um, software switch ports uh, if you wanted to as well, if you needed more ports on your network. This is an option. Um, so I'll go back. I won't do that one right now. Uh, also, you've got basic mode. This will cre quickly create a standard bridge. Um, so everything that you select in the uh, this one is going to uh, let them all talk to each other. So it's a bit like the software defined switch, but you can also assign things to this one. Um, you can put virtual adapters there for things like uh, containers or virtual virtual machines. You can add those into this one as well. Um, again, not going to do that one right now. And then also you've got the advanced mode. So this is effectively like when I configured the original adapter. So you can choose uh, lots of different options here. So exactly like I showed you on the previous one, but this lets you customize absolutely every setting uh, to do with the uh, the switch if you, if you wanted to go this way with it as well. Um, in the routing options, this is um, maybe getting a bit advanced for, for, for some users, but this will allow you to create um, custom static routes if you want to. So it'll show you the main routing table that's currently set. But if you wanted to add your own static route, you can do that there. So you can have a, a destination on a different uh, subnet mask. So long as you've got routing from one to the other, you can set up uh, which route that specific uh, data is going to go for a specific target uh, from the NAS. Uh, so you can set those up here if you want to as well. Um, so that's the network and virtual switch. Um, so again, we've got both options. So if anybody just wants very simple use case uh, of the network ports on the QNAP, you can probably just leave it in the basic mode option. Um, if you want to go to uh, the virtual switch method, so do more with the, the multiple LAN ports or the uh, different applications we have available in the, in the um, app center, uh, you can use those uh, with a virtual switch and you can really configure them how you want. So even if uh, when installing container station or virtualization station, even if it does automatically create you a virtual switch, you can always go and edit it and you can change it. So you can change anything around if you want to. Um, if anybody has any questions on the virtual switch or, or needs any further explanation on any of this, please do let us know and we'll get back to you um, in the comment section below. All right, thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.